Hello, the video today is all about this idea of limiting factors in photosynthesis. And just as a reminder, we have previously looked at light intensity versus the rate of photosynthesis, and we set up an experiment, or uh, described an experiment, where we had light intensity that we varied by changing the brightness of a bulb. We had bubbles given off by this pondweed called Elodea. And for different light intensities, we drew a graph, and the shape of the graph was something like this. So we had light intensity versus the rate of photosynthesis in bubbles per minute. If we look at this particular point on the graph, we can see that the rate of photosynthesis is low. So a light intensity of 10 arbitrary units gives a rate of photosynthesis which is low in comparison to the rest of the graph. What we can say here is that the rate of photosynthesis is limited. So the rate of photosynthesis is limited for that point there. How can we increase it? Well, if we increase the light intensity up to 20 units, we have an increase in the rate of photosynthesis. So it's less limited than it was before, and so on. Through our light intensities, we can get a higher and higher rate of photosynthesis, as shown by the bubbles per minute. It goes on till we reach a certain point, and that's when we have the maximum rate of photosynthesis. We can increase the light intensity as much as we want. We're not going to get a faster rate. So what we say is that for the flat part there at the top, light intensity is no longer the limiting factor. It was limiting the rate of photosynthesis before, but it's no longer the limiting factor because if we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis does not increase. Now, light is not the only limiting factor. There are other factors that can limit the rate of photosynthesis, and let's have a quick look at those now. So light intensity we just did, why is light important? Well, as we spoke about before, the energy for photosynthesis comes from light energy. Uh, the second limiting factor is carbon dioxide concentration. You'll remember that we need carbon dioxide, as shown by the equation, and that's needed to combine with water to make our final product of glucose, which is the food for the plant. Temperature is also a limiting factor. And in fact, if um, the temperature is not right, if it's not warm enough, the photosynthesis uh, will not continue at a reasonable rate. And that's because photosynthesis is controlled by enzymes and enzymes need the right temperature in which to function at their optimum or their best speed or best rate. So temperature is also a limiting factor. One more factor worth mentioning is the amount of chlorophyll in the plant. You'll remember that chlorophyll is needed to absorb the sunlight or the light that falls on the plant. We might have light falling on the plant, but without chlorophyll, we won't be able to absorb it and therefore no photosynthesis. Here's an example of a type of leaf, it's called a variegated leaf. And this is a leaf that has regions where there is low or no amounts of chlorophyll. And therefore those regions are going to photosynthesize less. So you can see they're highlighted in gray, all those areas there have less chlorophyll and so won't photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesize as well. Chlorophyll is also affected by the nutrients in the soil as the plant is growing and one key one is magnesium because magnesium helps to make chlorophyll. So we're going to look at these three particular factors now and how they actually affect the rate of photosynthesis. So in terms of light intensity we've looked at that already. We can describe the two regions of the graph, region A and region B. And for region A, we can say that the higher the light intensity, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. And that's because light intensity is the limiting factor for that region. If we look at region B, where it's flattened out, photosynthesis is at a maximum rate. Light intensity is no longer the limiting factor. So it doesn't matter how much you increase light intensity, it won't increase the rate of photosynthesis. Light intensity is no longer the limiting factor, but one of these three others or two others of the three could be. So for example, it could be either the CO2 concentration and or the temperature. But for region B, light is no longer limiting. What would it look like if we drew a graph of carbon dioxide concentration? Just get that onto the screen. Carbon dioxide concentration versus the rate. Well, the shape of the graph is very similar, if not identical. And we've got region A again and region B. And for region A, it's a very similar story. 
The higher the CO2 concentration, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. And we can say that carbon dioxide concentration is the limiting factor. But for region B, photosynthesis again is at a maximum. And the reason we don't get an increase is that CO2 is no longer a limiting factor, but another factor is. And again, in this case, it's either going to be light intensity or the temperature. What would the graph look like for temperature versus rate of photosynthesis? Well, that's a slightly different shape, shaped graph. For region A, we can uh, talk similarly in that the higher the rate, the faster, so the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. Uh, temperature is a limiting factor for region A, but for region B, we can describe what's going on as the temperature, sorry, the rate of photosynthesis dropping rapidly after that optimum level there. The reason for that is that we have enzymes we talked about, we mentioned before, they become what's called denatured. That means the shape of the active site, that's the part of the enzyme that does all the work, has been destroyed because of the excessive or too high temperature. So the temperature graph is slightly different, but you should be able to describe and explain the different parts of that graph. Now, how is this information useful? Well, we can look at growing plants in a greenhouse and in a greenhouse, as opposed to outside, we can control the conditions a bit more carefully than growing in a field. So knowing that those factors that we mentioned affect photosynthesis, we can actually influence those factors when we're growing plants. So let's have a look at some data. So it's similar graphs to what we've just seen, but this time I'm giving some values to the different parts. So here we've got a graph of light intensity versus rate of photosynthesis. We've got a 0.03% concentration of carbon dioxide and a temperature of 20 degrees. What would happen if we were to raise a temperature to 25? Well, you can see there that the overall maximum rate of photosynthesis has increased. We can not only change the temperature, but we could also change the carbon dioxide concentration as well. So what would happen if we did that? Well, here I've got 0.04% CO2 and 20 degrees. And not only could we change that, but we could change the temperature and the carbon dioxide concentration, and we'd get a higher rate still. So you can see there for the 0.04% carbon dioxide concentration and 25 degrees, we're getting a maximum uh, which is at a higher level than all the other graphs. So the key thing here is then to be able to, to use this information to decide what kind of conditions you might want in your greenhouse. I've just changed the uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.04 to 0.05 for carbon dioxide. But if we look at these two, we've got the same concentration of CO2, but a higher temperature. We can raise the carbon dioxide to 0 0.05, but keep it at 20 degrees. So here is the one we're comparing it to. Same temperature, higher CO2. And we've got a bigger jump there in the rate. And the very highest one there, we've got 0.05% CO2 and 25 degrees centigrade. And that's giving us the maximum rate of photosynthesis, which will lead to the maximum rate of growth of our plants. Now, the question is, which of these conditions do we actually use to grow our plants in the greenhouse? This graph here at the top, we've got the fastest growth rate, but what are the costs of energy? If we're spending too much money on energy to heat the place, it might not be worth having that temperature. For the graph right at the bottom, we're using uh, less money to spend on energy bills to keep the temperature higher. But what about the rate of photosynthesis? Does it make it too slow? And it also depend on what part of the year we're talking about. It would be much more expensive to get to 25 degrees in winter than it would in summer. So in reality, what tends to happen is it's usually a compromise between the right CO2 concentration and the right temperature. And the reason for that is to make sure we get maximum profits from the plants that we're growing and spend as little uh, as money on energy as possible. Okay, so that was limiting factors, how they affect growth and how we can use the idea to grow plants in a greenhouse.